Yeah, I, I, I'm troubled by redistribution, but my real point is, is for those that are a couple years away from, from retirement, and we've been telling them for basically their entire working lives that they're going to receive this sort of, uh, this amount of benefits, if you were to fundamentally change that, you know, uh, and they wouldn't have time then to uh, adjust their saving patterns, adjust the number of hours worked over those years, then, you know, the federal government set us up to this and, and we're paying the price because we've had leaders that for too long haven't fixed these programs. And all of us bear some measure of responsibility because we voted in office, those leaders. So yes, I am troubled by that. I think there's, there's too much wealth distribution in this country already. Um, but um, we're, in, we're in a difficult situation here. I am, yeah. Oh, she has a whole list of questions that she, uh, she collected from her lady friends. And, yeah. I represent the Bridge Club from here. Right. <laughs> okay, we would like to know uh, how you stand on uh, term limits. Sure. Well, why don't I take them one by one? That's what I thought Because I can't memorize them. Okay. Right. Uh, I'm for term limits. Our founding fathers actually considered whether or not they should include term limits in our Constitution. They didn't call them term limits, they called it rotation in office. And there actually was, at the time, rotation in office at the state levels. They came from, many of them came from state legislatures where term limits were used and used effectively. And they're still used to this day. People would go, they'd serve their state, in this case their country, uh, for a period of years, then they come back home and live under the very laws they help create. And to me, that's exactly what we need to happen again. Now, there are many counter arguments to term limits. We have elections. Those are, those are, you know, what, uh, that's how we limit terms in this country. Well, my response to that is, you know, that, at first blush, that sounds good to me. But the system is so weighted against challenges campaign finance reform that prevents somebody from exercising their First Amendment rights, giving <coughs> money to a candidate they believe in so they can get their message out. Incumbents, on the other hand, everyone knows their name because they're on TV all the time. Oh, by the way, they've also got male franking privileges that allows members of Congress to free of charge send out mailings to their constituents to keep them informed. Well, that sounds pretty good, but when you get those what are clearly political mailers from Barron Hill that don't have very much substance in them but have pretty pictures and tell you how hard he's working for you, you know, that's, that's not fair. Again, that, that would suggest we need term limits. Um, and then we have gerrymandering. That's, that's how our, our state legislatures draw these congressional district lines. It's really the politicians who are choosing the voters. And I thought it was supposed to be the other way around. So that's another thing we have working against us. Uh, so I don't buy the argument that elections will take care of term limits. I don't have an optimal number of years. Again, it's one out of 435 members. It would be irrelevant if I threw out a number of years. But I can tell you, if somebody's been in Washington for 40 plus years, as some of them have been, they've probably lost any common sense that they had when they first went there. <laughs> so. Let's also remember that we've got a very deep bench in this country. This is a really educated country with a lot of public spirited people. They just don't want to spend, leave their families behind for decades at a time to go serve their country in Washington. If we restored this ethic of the citizen legislator, though, we'd have plenty of people qualified to serve in Congress. I guarantee there's some in here today that would make good members of Congress. We have a bench of 310 million people in this country. I, I just don't buy the argument that we so need those few very, very strong members of Congress in Washington uh, that we can't afford to send them all home after a period of years and, and send new blood in. That would help ensure that uh, when we send people to Washington, they arrive with some new ideas. You know, if each member of Congress arrived with a couple of new ideas, Man, wouldn't that be nice every couple of years, just in, infusing some new energy and, and some new thought leadership into Washington? 
You know, health status insurance, not to toot my own horn, I didn't come up with that idea. It's actually an economist out of the University of Chicago who came up with it, but I haven't heard any other candidate talk about it. So that might be one of the things I would work on when I went there. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to give very complete answers to all your questions. So I've given you a long-winded response. Bottom line is yes, I would favor term limits. Right. Or to say, I'm grading you also. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're either good, maybe, or bad. Okay. <laughs> hey, the Briggs Club is pretty strong. <laughs> I thought you were going to grade, you know, ace. Uh, no, you know, no, or, no, right. not ABC. It's good, bad, or okay. <laughs> Gun control. I made a joke earlier. It's the one thing I saw on her list. And you have to forgive me. I'm a Marine. I said, gun control. I, uh, I'm, I'm for steady hands, you know, that's, that's gun control, but uh, that's a bad joke, I'll stick with my day job. Uh, look, I, I, I'm a strong believer in our Constitution, and that means our entire Constitution. And there may be some out here who are uncomfortable with our Second Amendment, but it does say that uh, all of us have a right to keep and bear arms. And uh, I would stand up for that right. Uh, listen to those who, who make counter arguments about uh, the need to amend the Constitution. But uh, if they're not willing to step up and, and go that route, then uh, we have to admit that there is a Second Amendment. Now, I happen to believe that it doesn't need amendment. Uh, I think that the uh, best way to ensure that people remain safe uh, around this country is to allow them to arm themselves, protect their own families, themselves, their communities. And there are a lot of studies out there that actually indicate the better armed the population, the safer your community will be. For those that don't believe it, go look up on the internet, John Lott, L-O-T-T. -T. More guns, less crime. He wrote a book on it. And uh, so that's my stand. By the way, after you had shown me, given that, I had put a Oh, yes. Under the good call. <laughs> okay. uh, under the uh, new health care uh, bill, uh, how do they uh, control the medications that uh, are furnished, or the medications? Uh, it's my understanding, uh, just within the past week or so, uh, pharmacies are being uh, made to not fill a prescription until the day it is due. Has anyone else experienced that? Just, okay. Yeah. All right. And That's been going on for some time. Is it really? Sure. Yes. Yeah. I hadn't had trouble for the last week. I, I think it depends on who you're... Oh, Medicare. Medicare. She, uh, she has uh, the B, which is medicine. Okay. And I just wondered if that was something new or if you knew anything about what was going on. I was going to run out of one medicine Sunday morning. I went in Thursday because I live out in the country. And gas is high to come back and forth. Sure. One medication they would not let me have. I could come back Saturday and got it. Not because I didn't get it till this evening when I come to town where I'm being here for this. And my preacher's wife, I was talking to her, and the same thing happened to her Friday. Well, I'm going to have to take a page out of my Naval Academy education here. We had three answers for upper class. Yes, sir, no, sir, or yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I'll find out, ma'am. That was the third. Uh, I, I have not heard that. It sounds like others in this room may or may not be familiar with that. But uh, uh, And I do admit that my wife has been getting the medication for our family over the last uh, number of months here uh, because we've been pretty, we've been pretty busy uh, working on this campaign. But uh, uh, I, I wrote it down, and we'll try and get you an answer. And, and if you want us to call you back after this, uh, we'll, we'll follow up, too. I'll have Melissa make sure that uh, we get back. Well, okay. the druggist even told me to get all my medicines on schedule for getting the same day. I'd run out the same day and get everything the same day. Huh. My apartment's a doctor runs different times, and I get a prescription, I go fill it. 
So how am I going 